Welcome to session 13. The focus of this session is teaching large classes. Throughout the sessions, the principal aims have been to ensure that you are confident and competent when using the Imperial English courses and tools, and additionally understand the rationale of the courses. But this training has also continuously emphasised the importance of the teacher's role in preparing, presenting, motivating and assessing and above all, to be a model of English language teacher use to the learners. This session moves away from the Imperial English UK materials in order to explore the wider world of English language teaching and encourage you to reflect on your own teaching and circumstances and perhaps inspire you to set up your own classroom-based action research projects which will benefit both yourselves and your peers. The comments here are taken from an interview with Dr Richard Smith while he was running teacher training workshops in Nepal. The reason for showing you these quotes is to focus on the idea that you can contribute to the ELT profession by thinking about your own teaching circumstances and exchange experiences and ideas or as well as reflect on your own experiences and the context you work in. Read the comments. Do you agree with Smith's views? In this module, we'll begin by considering large classes, which is a contrast to UK-based ELT teacher training courses, where 12 to 15 students or fewer would be regarded as the norm and ideal in a teacher training course like this. To truly benefit from this session, you should try to actively contribute with colleagues, if taking this session face to face, and do an honest self-reflection if you're training online. In most cases, there is no one correct approach to teaching large classes, and there are certainly opportunities for you to do your own practical research and further reading in these areas. Before making a start on large classes, I'd like to draw your attention to current concerns in the field of education in general. There has been a recent shift towards wider consideration in mainstream education, with large contextual variations in class sizes, availability of resources, and the teacher's linguistic competence, teacher experience and qualification, parental expectation versus learner ability and pressure from exams. Please note that points two to four are among the aims of the Imperial English UK courses and this training. Point five may not be relevant to all of you following this, but the ILP and learner autonomy elements of the Imperial English courses helps justify the approach teachers take and the standards they set. While the use of can-do statements and the close relationship between course assessment tests and course content removes pressure from students who have worked steadily throughout the course. Can you think of other challenges before we begin with large classes? It was West in 1960 who first explored the effect of learning in large classes. He observed classes of 30 students, more often 40 or 50, sitting congested on benches. The teachers graded their language poorly and often did not have adequate linguistic skills. Would you agree that more than 40 students is a, is a large class? Alan Maley's comment also highlights other factors that can play a role. Do you feel that any of these points are more serious issues than the actual student numbers in the classroom? Would you say that approach taken by the Imperial English apps might improve a large classroom setting? Think about your teaching context or learning experience and your country as a whole. What is the recommended class size 
What would be the ideal class size for you as a teacher? What kind of problems could a large class pose for the teacher and student? Shemin's study in 2007 found that large classes were not defined just in terms of numbers, but mostly due to other factors such as reliance, teacher stress and workload, concerns over equal opportunities, classroom management and assessment concerns. Think about how your views correspond to these findings. Shamin's earlier research looked at into how the students felt their learning was affected by large classes. This included overcrowding and lack of space, lack of attention from the teacher, lack of opportunities to participate, disruption, difficulty getting work checked and feedback. Further evidence from other studies also suggest that issues with teaching large classes stem from other factors than just student numbers. Perhaps it is the approach to class size that needs consideration. So, is classroom management the issue rather than class size? This view is supported by Buckingham's 2003 investigation. He states that a class size is less of an issue when the teachers are competent and teaching quality is of a high standard. Having good teachers rather than lots of teachers is far more valuable and worthwhile. What do you think? Look at some of the problem areas you might experience in large classes. They have been put into six categories. How can these challenges be overcome? What strategies can you propose? While the Imperial English UK app courses were not specifically designed for classes of 30 plus, could any of the functions be beneficial for working with large classes? Here are some suggested solutions, but they're mixed up. Can you decide which heading to place them under? Then we will compare them with your ideas and decide how effective you think they might be. Here are the suggested groupings. See how they compare with yours. China is well known for large classes for all age groups. Bear in mind that classrooms in older Chinese schools and colleges have tables that are fixed to the floor, so furniture cannot be moved or rearranged. Therefore, physical movement could be limited to students turning round to speak with the person behind them to make a change from speaking to their partners on either side. Here are some possible teaching principles and strategies for large classes according to results of a literature review. Four areas were highlighted with examples. These solutions emphasise the role of the teacher both in and out of the classroom in order to know the students well and the holistic approach that this requires. Giving feedback in time should be regarded as a normal requirement for a professional teacher. Point three stresses that the learner is the focus of the lesson, with equal opportunities and differentiation being part of the lesson planning process. Point four highlights the importance of variety in a lesson. Would you say that the Imperial English UK GES courses take these features into account, either in the course itself or guidance in the teacher's handbooks? When looking at the management related measures, it is important to remember that you, the teacher and the students share responsibility in the learning process. The teacher has to plan groupings in advance and therefore know the students as individuals to do so, while the students need to accept responsibility for their own learning, 
which brings us back to taking small steps throughout any course to develop learner autonomy in your students. Can your students self-evaluate? For example, use can-do statements and prepare an ILP. Can your students offer constructive peer evaluation? A recent trend is flip teaching, when the learning takes place outside the classroom through self-study, perhaps using online resources. It is in class that the assessment takes place. This can be in the form of traditional tests, student presentations or role plays. The students use the classroom to demonstrate their knowledge and skills. However, as Richard Smith puts it, there have been too many quick fixes, so-called solutions, imposed onto teachers in the past which don't work because they come from other, quite different contexts. You need to identify your strengths and share them with each other rather than following a recommendation just for the sake of it. What is really important is for teachers to share ideas with one another locally. That is why you as teachers are important. You are part of a profession and a community. Remember this quote we looked at earlier from Buckingham. I'm reminding you of this to reinforce how important it is for you to regard yourself as a professional. But at the same time, we have to be practical and accept the situation we find ourselves in. It may be that you are teaching 50 students who have walked five miles to school in 40 degree weather after doing morning chores and the classroom is small and the facility is basic. Or it may be that you are teaching 50 students in a lecture theatre with a microphone, projector and teaching assistants to help you. Either way, if you know your students and the facilities you have, then plan accordingly. And there's no reason that 30 or fewer students should be the ideal class size. These are the hashtag words to take from this session. Write a short summary of the session using the hashtag words and examples where possible.